This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. This is our first show of the new year, and we are going to be exploring a very interesting organization in our state called the Nature Conservancy. Conservancy. And my special guest is Heather Furman, who is the state director of the Nature Conservancy. And uh, we're going to be exploring all that uh, the organization has done in its history, uh, certain issues that it's facing now, and most importantly, how you can help uh, in its work. Welcome, Heather. Thank you, Dennis. It's great to be here. In here. And just tell us, if you would, a little bit about yourself. Don't be shy. Sure. Sure. So, as you've said, uh, my name is Heather Furman. I'm the state director for the Vermont chapter of the Nature Conservancy. Um, I have been living in Vermont for about 25 years, and I've been the state director at the Nature Conservancy for almost nine. Um, I went to UVM. I graduated from UVM's graduate program at the Rubenstein School, and I studied natural resource planning. So I'm really excited to be able to apply what I studied to the work that I do every single day. Great. Well, tell us about the organization itself, its history, and what its mission is. Sure. So the Nature Conservancy was founded in uh, 1951 by a group of ecologists, scientists um, in New England and New York. Um, and we, over our 70 year history, we have been conserving some of the most special places around the world. Today, we are in around 76 countries. So we partner with organizations in countries around the world. And as a science-based, science-driven organization, um, we bring research, we bring science to um, apply it to the conservation work that we're doing to protect our lands and waters. Um, in the US, most people know us for our history of land conservation. We've protected about 125 million acres of land in the US. Um, and in 1961, uh, our Vermont chapter was founded. And it's a very um, homegrown local um, chapter. It was founded by Hub Vogelman at the University of Vermont. Um, and and uh, for a long time, it was volunteer-led, a uh, group of really passionate conservationists got together, um, worked to conserve places like Shelburne Farms and Bar Hill up in, in Greensboro. Um, and over the years, we have become the second largest private landowner in the state of Vermont. And so today we own and manage 58 natural areas around the state. Um, there's probably one in your hometown or at least in your county. Um, we uh, operate our, um, our, our natural areas for public access, for its, their ecological values, um, for climate resilience, um, and we allow the public to, to use our properties. Um, we have what we call uh, flagship areas. Uh, we have 11 flagship areas, places like Raven Ridge in Moncton and Charlotte, where we, um, we support public access. So at, at Raven Ridge, for example, we've put in a, a universally accessible uh, boardwalk so that uh, everyone can access the property and experience the beauty of nature. Um, and we often have work days and field days and opportunities for school groups and researchers to come out and learn about the ecology of the place um, or just experience the beauty of nature. So I encourage everyone to experience our natural areas. It's um, something that we're really proud of at the Nature Conservancy. And today we continue to um, protect lands. Um, when I say protect lands, I mean we conserve them by either buying them um, and owning and managing them for all of the things that we care about, for, for climate resilience, for public access, for clean water, um, or we partner with our other organizations to conserve lands. And something that I'm really proud of is that the Nature Conservancy has had a hand in 
helping the state of Vermont acquire um, new state parks, new state forests, wildlife management areas. We work with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, so in fact, uh, we've helped protect about 23% of all of our state owned lands today. Um, we've, we've, uh, we've worked for a long time with our government agencies so that uh, the public, the lands that the, um, that we have helped protect are in the public domain and, and available to everyone. So we're really proud of that. Um, in total, we've probably protected over 300,000 acres in Vermont. And, uh, and you can find uh, the hand of the Nature Conservancy all across the state in that work. That's great. Just to get very basic here, how is a, is a natural area defined? Uh, is it devoid of any development or is it partially developed? Just give us an overview of, of that concept because I think it's important. Yeah, so thank you for that. We protect land for all kinds of reasons, right? Sometimes we protect land so that um, we can continue to operate it as a working forest, you know, to harvest timber, to um, supply wood products to um, to people and to industry. Um, natural areas in Vermont are protected typically to protect really special ecological values. Maybe there's a rare and endangered species or there's a habitat type that is really unique and special to Vermont. So um, historically, as a science-based organization, we've identified these areas in Vermont that are pretty special. And we have worked to protect those for the natural values that are there. Um, what we have learned over time is that many of the places that we have conserved also happen to be really important as for what we call climate resilient lands. So climate resilient lands are areas where um, maybe the topography, the diversity the, in species, the microclimates are supporting a rich tapestry of biology. And as the climate changes, it's really important that species are able to move and colonize new areas. Um, and so we need protected habitats. We need protected areas that are connected together to allow species movement across the landscape. And so when I say natural area, um, these are kind of what I think of as like strongholds for species to be able to meet all of their life needs as well as adapt in the face of climate change to move to new ranges to have um, um, all the habitat available that that species need as the climate changes. So um, typically they're not, there's no human development there, but there is opportunity to, for the public to use those properties. Um, we open all of our properties for hunting and fishing and hiking and cross-country skiing. And so, um, so it's a blend of uh, being able to protect the variety and diversity of nature as well as give people a place to go and um, really see uh, something special. I remember uh, our immediate last governor, uh, Peter Shumlin, when he took office talking about climate change uh, being one of the most difficult issues uh, that he and the administration would face. And it is now all over the news, of course, uh, as it should be. Tell us a little bit about climate change and the impact on Vermont uh, from your experience. Yeah, um, so many ways in which we're seeing the effects of climate change. So recently, we partnered with the University of Vermont to, to look at um, the effects of climate change on Vermont. And I'll give you a, a link to the website um, of the 2021 Vermont Climate Assessment. And this assessment just looks at what are we seeing as, as the climate changes on, as what are the impacts on our environment, on our communities? Um, and one of the things that we learned is that the rate at which um, we're experiencing major flood events is increasing. Um, Vermont is becoming is becoming warmer and wetter. You wouldn't know that today, mm -hmm. but it, overall, 
Vermont is becoming warmer and wetter. And we are experiencing um, 1.4 major flood disasters per year, which is a, an increase of about 20% over historic rates of flooding and, um, and impacts due to climate change. So uh, the other thing that is affecting um, our communities is that over the history of our development in Vermont, we have straightened our rivers. And so as we are experiencing this warmer and wetter um, climate, the, the frequency of those floods and the velocity of the floodwaters is really starting to impact our communities in ways that um, put a lot of Vermonters at risk. And so um, one of the most important things that we could do is to um, protect our river corridors from encroaching development. And um, because one of the biggest impacts during the flood is that somebody gets flooded out. There's a, uh, you've seen this, you saw this with Irene, you're seeing it more and more during these summer floods. Um, our roads get washed out, our bridges get washed out, um, sometimes homes get flooded. And so um, knowing that that is gonna continue uh, this this trend around um, increased flood events, and because of the history of our you know straightened rivers, um, those floodwaters are moving that much faster, and the impacts are that much greater. So, by protecting our river corridors, and I mean like conserving and restoring our river corridors with um, natural vegetation and restoring wetlands and our floodplains, that that um, activity can actually slow floodwaters. So you think of a river and um, it's cruising down the mountain and it needs somewhere to go. There's velocity there during a big rainstorm. And if that river can access its floodplain and flood that, that, that floodplain and there's plants and trees to absorb those floodwaters and those sediments, it's gonna slow that river down and the impacts will be much less downstream. So um, it's something that the Nature Conservancy is working really hard on, um, both from a policy perspective, as well as actually getting in there and restoring our floodplains, using our science to um, understand how to restore these floodplains in a cost-efficient way that keeps invasive species out, that provides habitat, um, and brings back some wetlands for birds and and um, other wildlife. Sounds like a very big and a very important job. C can you just give us an idea of the scope uh, of your organization in terms of personnel and and uh, outreach? Uh, uh, individuals? Sure. I know you talked about scientists and and, and perhaps I guess uh, environmental consultants, but just give us an idea. You're based in Montpelier. Is that that's really that's where your yeah. office is. Just yeah. Just give us an idea of the scope of your organization, because that'll fit into how people can help. Sure, absolutely. So um, we are a chapter in an organization that has a chapter in about every state, very homegrown kind of uh, local chapters. And our, our team in Vermont, we have about 25 people on staff um, and we have uh, folks working on our land conservation work, on our water work, as well as in the policy and climate arenas. Um, uh, we have, um, a communications team, and we have a fundraising team as well. Um, we rely on both public and private dollars to support our work. Um, and we do offer uh, many opportunities for people to engage with us. We host events and field outings. Um, uh, and so folks can get involved with us by just coming to one of our events and seeing some of these wonderful natural areas that we've helped to protect. Um, or they can volunteer for us. And we've got lots of work going on on our properties. If you really like to uh, tackle and pull invasive species, or you wanna help us build a trail or a boardwalk, um, we could certainly uh, use your help. That's great. We have a very excellent website and we're gonna publish that uh, along uh, with the video. Uh, and I noticed there are a number of projects that are ongoing uh, or coming up. Uh, could you describe some of those? such as the artist in residence project and 
the forest yeah. Garden project, things like that. Yeah, sure. Um, yes, we've worked with uh, an artist in residence over the course of the last year, Elizabeth Billings, um, and she has done a number of installations actually on our uh, natural areas. You can go see them, um, which she built a beautiful um, bench at La Platte River um, Preserve in Shelburne. Um, and she's installed a, a, um, a landscape. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a landscape installation. You're kind of walking through the woods and you kind of come up on this, this piece of artwork in the forest at Raven Ridge and also down at uh, our Equinox natural area down in Manchester. So you can go see the work that she has done there. Um, we did that work to, um, you know, everybody during COVID has um, taken to the woods for a little bit of reprieve early on in COVID. Um, folks didn't have a lot of places to go when we were all in quarantine. And so uh, the, the public began using our natural areas as well as other um, parks and, and um, trails. And we saw an incredible uptick in, in the use of our lands. And so um, we wanted to give people just something special to see in the woods, um, a place of contemplation. contemplation. Um, we had a lot of artists visit the woods and it was really nice to be engaging with different communities and just as a way to say thank you to everyone who's helped support us and um, uh, endured the, the quarantine last year. So that was really great. Um, the other project you mentioned is our forest carbon work and uh, forest carbon, um, that is simply uh, the ability of trees to absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. So of course, we're all, we're all aware of um, the increase in greenhouse gas emissions out there. And one of the ways that the Nature Conservancy is working to mitigate that is by um, managing our forest to an, absorb more carbon. And, um, we're working in southern Vermont as well as northern Vermont with uh, with landowners to enroll their lands into what what is known as forest carbon markets. This is a uh, a voluntary market that um, organizations, institutions, companies can can buy carbon credits. And so, as we manage our lands for carbon. Um, those carbon credits become available for purchase and it incentivizes and is actually a, a way for forest landowners to have another revenue stream coming in for that to, to their, you know, they need, they need revenue to own and manage land. So forest carbon markets offer another revenue stream for forest landowners. So um, it's exciting because uh, we've worked in the cold hollow mountains with our partners, Vermont Land Trust and Cold Hollow to Canada to um, aggregate landowners together so they can enroll their, their, their land into the carbon market together. And we are beginning to work in Southern Vermont um, to enroll forest landowners in a program called Family Forest Carbon, which essentially you know, helps um, give landowners the resources, the tools, the techniques and the support to manage their land for more carbon absorption and actually achieve a revenue stream for that. So it's pretty exciting. That is. Uh, I just want to ask you now, uh, since the, the legislature is in session and Congress is in session, what advocacy issues are you concerned about and, and how people can help? Yeah, so um, one of the most important ones is what we talked about earlier. Um, uh, I think there is legislation being introduced to help protect our river corridors. It's really important that um, we get a handle around on um, development in our river corridors, as I said, for all of the reasons. Uh, we don't wanna see communities continue to be flooded out. We don't want property loss. That increases tax dollars um, in recovery. And so um, uh, protecting our river corridors by, um, in excluding development from those critical floodplains is something that we care deeply about and we want to see advanced forward. Um, the other uh, really important um, policy uh, action that we 
take every year is to support the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. Um, the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, VHCB, is one of our most important funding sources in the state for getting land conserved and having um, these places, really important places, protected for communities. Um, and that's everything from protecting farmland to protecting recreation land to protecting our, our wetlands and floodplains um, to support water quality. So uh, VHCB um, uh, is funded through the Vermont Property Transfer Tax, and we um, strongly support full funding for VHCB for both affordable housing as well as for all of the conservation uh, projects that the Nature Conservancy and our partners work on around the state. Great. Well, um, one of the things that we like to do here on Positively Vermont is uh, tell people how they can help. Uh, what do you need? Uh, funding, volunteers, uh, uh, people to call, representatives. Uh, just uh, let us conclude with your uh, uh, wishes uh, uh, for people, what they can do, if they want to know what they can do, because I believe you have piqued uh, our interest, and uh, there's plenty of great stuff on the website, and we're going to publish that. But tell us how people can help. Yeah, there's so many ways. Um, obviously, we're a member uh, based organization as a nonprofit. Um, we love, we would love to have you uh, as a member, support us as a member. You can go online, you can come to, right into our Montpelier, well, maybe not right now, you can't come into the Montpelier office, but you can send uh, support to our, our Montpelier office and we would be exceedingly grateful for that. Um, if you have forest land that you are interested in conserving, um, or you want to manage it for habitat and biodiversity um, or for forest carbon, get in touch with us. Um, we're helping uh, and supporting landowners to um, enroll or to manage their land for forest carbon. Um, we can always use volunteers. We are, the, as I mentioned earlier, as the second largest private landowner in the state, we've got a lot of land to own and manage and we have uh, a wonderful volunteer coordinator who helps us um, uh, track all of our interested folks and match them up with in opportunities all around the state. Um, a lot of that work happens in the spring, summer, and fall, um, but uh, we're, we're in the process of planning for those activities now. So if you'd like to volunteer with us, uh, we'd love to have your support there. That is wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Heather. You've really been an excellent guest. And uh, there's so much more to this. And hopefully people will look into the website and see some of those very interesting videos uh, on that. And yeah. uh, we will keep in touch and let us know what's going on as the year progresses. Well, thank wonderful, you. Dennis. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're really good. Well, thank you very much again, Heather. And uh, this is Dennis McMahon uh, for Positively Vermont. Our guest has been Heather Furman, the State Director of the Nature Conservancy. And thank you for watching.